Hi, my name is Tom Perring from the University of Sheffield. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through our paper on high time resolution fluctuations of carbon dioxide from Mount Etna. By combining the use of a multi-gas analyzer to measure CO2-SO2 ratios and ultraviolet spectroscopy to measure SO2, we can reveal fluctuations in volcanic CO2 degassing at a resolution of 1 Hz. To demonstrate our technique, we use the plume of the northeast crater of Mount Etna, placing the multi-gas analyzer in the plume at the summit, while synchronously capturing ultraviolet images of the plume. At A, we show the plume direction, B, the point of integration in the UV camera images to determine our SO2 mass flux, and C, the approximate location of this integration line on the map. Following data acquisition, we then need to determine a delay between the arrival of gas at the multi-gas unit and the location of UV-derived SO2 flux due to the location of the multi-gas unit upwind. This was done using simple plume speed and distance calculations corroborated by cross-correlation of the multi-gas SO2 and UV-SO2. We can then shift the UV-SO2 series to temporarily match the multi-gas. Given the broad correlation between multi-gas CO2 and SO2 in A, and the clear similarities between UV and multi-gas derived SO2 demonstrated in B, we can then multiply CO2-SO2 mass ratio by the UV-SO2 flux in F to derive a high time resolution CO2 flux in E. Our results show that CO2 emissions vary over timescales of tens to hundreds of seconds between approximately 0.1 and 12 kg per second. Using wavelet analysis, we demonstrate the non-stationary degassing behaviour of CO2, SO2 and seismicity, with characteristic periodicities between 40 and 500 seconds. Further to this, the dominant oscillation frequency was assessed using power spectral density analysis, which revealed common peaks at around 89 seconds for CO2, SO2 and ratios. This strongly implies that fluctuations are indeed volcanogenic in origin. Potential drivers of periodic degassing features are discussed in the paper. In further analysis, we correlate the output coefficients generated in the wavelet analysis from the various captured datasets to establish the degree of match between oscillations present in each series. There are clear links between CO2 and SO2 in A, which temporarily break down after 250 seconds. During this period of absent correlation, the seismic versus CO2 correlation plot in B shows an area of intriguing negative correlation. This is suggestive of a lag between the two series. This figure shows the coefficients over the periodicity range with negative correlation present and further demonstrates the potential lag between CO2 and seismicity. Whilst the lag direction is unconfirmed due to the brevity of the dataset, it could indicate the lag of seismicity behind gas emissions of around 125 seconds for example the distinctive peaks between 8.50 and 9 o'clock. Equally, a small northwesterly displacement in tremor at 9.10 to 9.15 is followed by several large peaks in CO2 and SO2 emissions around 500 to 900 seconds later. This invokes potential and tentative mechanisms worthy of further investigation for the generation of such a lag. Mechanisms could include deeper derived volatiles driving seismicity or the generation of seismic energy following a readjustment in magma level. In summary, we have developed a new method to reveal high time resolution CO2 flux and that it varies rapidly over short time scales. Emissions are linked by common periodicities and we demonstrate an intriguing link between gas flux and seismicity.